uh, tactical or strategic reason for that as well as just wanting to be a nice guy, right? I mean, you know, Apple was in, in very serious trouble. And um, what was really clear was that if the game was a zero sum game where for Apple to win, Microsoft had to lose, then Apple was going to lose. But that's a lot of people's heads were still in that place. Why was that from your perspective? Well, a lot of people's heads were in that place at Apple mm -hmm. uh, and, and even in the customer base because, you know, Apple had invented a lot of this stuff and Microsoft was being successful and Apple wasn't and there was jealousy and this and that. There was just a lot of reasons for it that don't matter. But the net result of it was, was there were too many people at Apple and in the Apple ecosystem playing the game of for Apple to win, Microsoft has to lose. And it was clear that you didn't have to play that game because Apple wasn't going to beat Microsoft. Apple didn't have to beat Microsoft. Apple had to remember who Apple was because it had forgotten who Apple was. And uh, so to me, it was pretty essential to break that paradigm. And it was, it was also important that you know, Microsoft was, was the biggest software developer outside of Apple developing for the Mac. And, and so you know, that was, it was just crazy what was happening at that time. And Apple was very weak. And uh, so I called Bill up, and we tried to patch things up. And since that time, we've had a team that's fairly dedicated to doing the Mac applications. And they've always been treated kind of in a unique way so that they can have a uh, pretty special relationship with Apple. And that's worked out very well. In fact, every couple years or so, there's been something new that we've been able to do on the Mac. And uh, we have a great, it's a great business for us. And, uh, and it's actually the relationship between the Mac development team at, at Microsoft and Apple is a great relationship. It's one of our best developer relationships.